In this video, we're going to talk about direct proofs, and specifically, we're going to focus on direct proofs of something like P implies Q. In order to show that P implies Q by direct proof, we assume that P is true, and then we show that Q follows using regular rules. In this case, we'll use rules of algebra. In order to do these proofs we're going to study this semester, we're going to focus on odd and even proofs. We need to have a working definition of what it means for n to be even. Well, if n is even, it's divisible by 2, so we know that n must be a multiple of 2. Therefore, n would have to equal 2k for some integer k. Any even number is always 2 times some other number. For n to be odd, we would only have to be one number away from an even number. We could go up one or down one, but we just decide to go up one to keep everything positive here. So when we have to represent a general odd number, we'll write it as 2k plus 1. Now for this example, we're going to try to prove that if n is even, then 3n plus 5 is odd. So it's important to start these proofs understanding that this is a direct proof. We're going to assume that n is even, and then we're going to show that 3n plus 5 is odd. So we're going to write that out so we have something clear and easy to follow. We're going to assume that n is even, and we're going to have to show that 3n plus 5 is odd. Okay. Now mathematically, if we know that n is even, we write n equals 2k. To show that 3n plus 5 is odd, we want to show that 3n plus 5 equals 2 times an integer plus 1, but we can't use the same k over here because that would imply that whatever k was being used for n is the same k over here. We don't need this to be the same k. We just need to show that it's 2 times some integer l plus 1. 2l plus 1 has to be odd because 2l has to be even. Okay? So here's how we go about the proof. We start with n equals 2k, and we construct 3n plus 5. Well, if n equals 2k, we can replace the n with 2k and get n equals 3n plus 5 equals 6k plus 5. Okay. Now we're going to use some factoring that's going to be a little bit different than the way we're used to factoring. There is certainly no common factor here, right? but think about our goal. Our goal is to write 3n plus 5 as 2 times something plus 1. Well, we're going to need to see that plus 1 in order to work with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to notice that inside a plus 5, there's really a plus 1. So we're going to pull 1 out of the 5, leaving 4 behind, and write that 5 really as 4 plus 1. This is going to allow the plus 1 to sit here at the end, which can match this plus 1 over here. You can also notice that the 6k plus 4 does have a factor of 2. We don't need the greatest common factor. Again, our goal is to try to match this end rule, which is why I think it really helps to have the 3n plus 5 equals 2l plus 1 written down on paper so you can help get to that final destination. So what we want to do is factor a 2 out, which will leave a 3k plus 2 behind, plus 1. And we're just about where we need to be. This 3k plus 2 has to be an integer. We know that k is an integer. If you multiply an integer times 3 and add 2, you also have an integer. So we know that this is really 2 times some l plus 1, which is, in fact, the representation of an odd number. Okay? So look this proof over. Again, all those proofs generally go the same way. For a direct proof, we assume the hypothesis of our implication, we show the conclusion, and we do this by constructing the expression 3n plus 5 using the initial assumption about n, and then we just try to make the pattern fit. We needed a 2l plus 1, so we pulled off the plus 1, hope that everything else was a multiple of 2, and we have our proof. 